Okay, the purpose of this video is to do a Laplace transform analysis of a simple DC motor model and uh, do things like find the transfer function of the DC motor and its load. Um, from the transfer function we can find the impulse response. We can actually uh, look at what happens when we run particular signals through the system and so on. So that's the goal, the ultimate goal of this analysis. Um, we're going to use the model of the DC motor and its load that was developed in the video sequence titled Modeling a DC Motor in Simulink. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time redoing or redeveloping that model. Uh, if you have questions about the model, you can find uh, a fairly detailed development in the Modeling a DC Motor in Simulink video. Um, so. Uh, with that, let's actually go ahead and start. Our goal is to find the transfer function of the DC motor and its load. And the transfer function, to abuse notation here, is written as the ratio of the Laplace transform of an output signal over the, the Laplace transform of an input signal. And uh, once I get those two, then I can uh, compute the, the uh, transfer function. So we'll start with our model expressed in terms of uh, the differential equations. Um, in this particular case, the voltage that's applied to the motor is the input. and the angular velocity of the motor is the output. And again, the transfer function h of s relates these two. So in the case we have here, um, our transfer function is going to be omega of s over v sub s of s. Okay. Now the differential equations that relate these two are the following. And you'll remember differential equations are in the time domain. So v sub s, which again is the source voltage applied to the motor, is equal to r times I of t, where I is the current through the motor, and R is the motor's resistance, plus L di dt. So L is the motor's inductance, plus kb, which is a constant that uh, uh, tells us how large the back EMF is going to be, times the radial velocity of the load. The second differential equation that we need is that the derivative of omega with respect to t is equal to k sub t, this is the torque constant of the motor, divided by I sub L, which is the moment of inertia of the load, times the current going through the motor. Okay. So these are the two differential equations that we need. Uh, we'll use them in just a minute to find the transfer function. At some point, we're going to want to actually uh, plug in values for all the constants and, and do some numerical computations. So I will put these constants down here. Uh, the torque constant is 0 0.02 newton meters per amp. The back EMF constant is going to be uh, 0.22 volts per radian per second. The resistance of the, of the motor is 1 ohm. The inductance of the motor is 0.2 henrys. And the moment of inertia of the load is 0 0.005 
kilograms uh, meter squared. Okay, so this is um, again the values that we'll use. Uh, we'll actually do the derivation of the transfer function with uh, the symbolic constants, but once we want to start working with it numerically, these are the values we'll use. So um, we are ready then to begin. We'll start with this differential equation. We'll see if we can do a real cool special effect here. Okay, erase everything there, and then bring it back. Wasn't that impressive? And what we want to do is uh, find the Laplace transform of all the terms in this differential equation. Uh, we're going to use the unilateral Laplace transform because the way our problem is set up, we're typically going to be interested in initial conditions. Is the load at rest? Is it spinning? And so on. So um, as we go through this, we'll, we'll actually use the uh, uh, unilateral Laplace transform. So to take the Laplace transform of each of the terms in this equation, I have Vs of S. So I don't actually know what the input voltage is going to be, but if I did know what the input voltage was, I could have its Laplace transform. And so uh, that's, well, yeah, that's the uh, Laplace transform of the input voltage. It's equal to R times I of S. That's the Laplace transform of the current, plus L times the Laplace transform of the derivative of the current. So this is going to be S I of S minus I of 0 minus. Okay, this is the initial current that's going through the motor and uh, we need to have that initial condition since we're using the unilateral Laplace transform. And then we'll have finally K sub B times omega of S, the Laplace transform of the radial velocity omega of t. Okay, so that's the Laplace transform of the first term. Uh, the Laplace transform of the second uh, differential equation, which I guess I'd better rewrite because I blew it up so spectacularly, is d omega dt is equal to kt over il times i of t. Okay, well taking the unilateral Laplace transform of this equation, I'm going to have s times omega s minus omega 0 minus is equal to kt i l times i of s. Okay. So now we basically have uh, two equations in the Laplace transform domain. Uh, we've got this guy here and this guy here. Um, the next thing we need to do is we need to combine these two equations and solve for the ratio of omega s over v sub s. That will give us the transfer function. But before we do that, we need to uh, think about the initial conditions for a moment. Again, I'm using the unilateral Laplace transform because at some point I'm going to want to do things that involve initial conditions. But hopefully you'll remember that the transfer function is basically the ratio of the output Laplace or the Laplace transform of the output to the Laplace transform of the input, assuming that all the initial conditions are zero. So for the purpose of computing the transfer function, I'm going to assume that the initial current is zero and the initial omega is zero. Later on, when we decide to look at what happens when we don't have initial conditions, or when we don't have zero initial conditions, we'll uh, not set those guys to zero and we'll see what we get. So that's a about where we'll stop this video. In the second half of it, we will uh, go ahead and compute the transfer function 
and then uh, plug some numbers in to uh, get it numerically. So stay tuned for part two of this video.